Hey guys, got a quick but short problem, uh, so let's jump in. The statement reads, use the result of the circular loop to calculate the magnetic field at the center of a uniformly charged spherical shell of radius r and total charge q, spinning at a constant angular velocity omega. Uh, to start, let's draw a diagram of the sphere. We see that at the center, we have radius r going out to the surface, Theta is the normalized mutual theta that we've been dealing with. Uh, but any segment there on the surface is broken down into components R cosine theta and R sine theta. Um, note that as we're sweeping over the surface, that creates a little disk of infinitesimal length. Uh, that has a discrete surface area that changes with the theta. So that's how we'll modify the result of the circular loop. So given that the field of a circular loop is given as b equal mu naught i over 2 uh, times r squared divided by r squared plus z squared to 3 halves, we can modify this based on the fact that i changes with respect to theta. Uh, from the diagram, we saw how that was uh, working. Here's a little more write-up on it. Uh, but with that, we need to integrate out over the whole uh, surface of di. Uh, which we'll have to write now in terms of theta. So here we see we integrate the B field and we bring out mu naught over 2 because they're constants. Uh, we leave A squared and uh, divided by A squared plus Z squared to 3 halves times DI. Now we need to define what A, Z, and DI are. So from the diagram, we can tell that A is equal to R sine theta, Z is equal to R cosine theta, and if we square them respectively, we get those results. DI is a little more complicated. Uh, since we know that DI changes with theta, we know that it's going to equal something times D theta. Uh, but we have the arc length of going out to the surface. So, that's, so we end up with KR D theta, where K is the surface current density on the uh, spinning sphere. And we know that that's equal to omega V. Um However, we know that we are in a circular path, so V needs to be written with omega. So we have omega R sine theta for the respective, uh, I guess, latitudinal uh, coordinate. Uh, but then we know that sigma is equal to Q divided by the surface area. So we have 4 pi R squared for sigma. Um, and then we see that we put it all together, the R's cancel. Again, these R's canceling and radius canceling seem to be commonplace from mechanics all the way to uh, electrodynamics. Um, so anyway, so we plug in the DI and the uh, A and Z terms respectively into the integral. Note that since theta is the azimuthal uh, angle, we're going from zero to pi. Um, so now we just need to simplify this down. The A squared term and z squared term in the denominator, we can factor out an r squared. And then we know that from the Pythagorean identity, that cancels to 1. Meanwhile, from the di, we know that q and omega over 4 pi are constants, so we can factor them out. And that's what we do in the next step. Uh, following that, we can see that the result of the Pythagorean identity application yields r squared in the denominator which that square cancels with the one half power from the three halves. And thus we get a R cubed in the denominator, which cancels with the R squared in the numerator. So finally, we get to all the constants out front being mu naught Q omega over eight pi R. Uh, and then we're just left with sine cubed theta, which uh, when plugged into a calculator expresses as four thirds. So therefore, we can say that the field at the center is uh, mu naught q omega over 6 pi r in the z hat direction. That was pretty cool to see come together.